file, open, and I don't know where it would be. Oh, PFT Arch downloads. Where, there we go. Class 4 demo scan, which you should have saved to your computer. And it's going to say open, import from PDF. Go ahead and hit import. So you should have something like that on your machine. Now, again, what I noticed is, you know, a lot of you are taking it with pictures. And the first thing I would do, what's the first thing we do when we're working in GIMP? File, uh, save, and I'm just going to put mine on my desktop. I'm going to put 2022, not 12022. Two, and today is the 8th, 0208. Uh, class GIMP, GIMP stuff, whatever. And I'm going to save it on my desktop and save. When I've done that, if you'll notice up top, you want me to turn that light, those lights off so you can see that screen a little better? Let me try and dim them. All right, um, you can go ahead and change pixels to inches. It's not critical that you do that, but I like to. I just like to, pixels don't mean much to me. This picture is about 11 and something inches by seven inches. All right, the, the first thing I'm gonna do, the drawing is crooked, I did that on purpose, and it's yellow. Because a lot of you folks are gonna take pictures of your tracing paper and they're gonna come out yellow. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go image, mode, grayscale. So go ahead and do that. And what that's going to allow me to do is, is when I go to get rid of this background, which showed up in a lot of your GIMP stuff, um, it, it works better in grayscale. Trying to get rid of it using curves, which I'm going to show you in a minute, works better in grayscale. So I want to rotate this image and get it straightened out, and then I'm going to try and get rid of the background. The way I straighten it out, first, move your cursor up to the ruler, left click, hold, bring down that guide. You can see that line moving. I kind of put it in like the middle of the bottom property line so I have a rough idea. It's just a visual reference to see what straight is. I then go up to image, transform. I'm going to do arbitrary rotation. And I can do this a couple different ways. I can either type numbers in there or I should be able to just grab, left click a corner of the outside on the corner of the picture See where my cursor is over here? Just left click. And now I can just turn it with my hand. I'm holding the button down. I'm turning it. Now I look at that bottom property line, which is kind of curvy. But if I can get it sort of straight, I think that works a little better. So I've got it straight. I just take my finger off. I come back here and I go rotate. And now all of a sudden, the picture's straight on the page. Now what I don't like about this is I want to zoom out a little bit. There's many ways you can do that. The way I lo like to do it is go Windows, Dockable Dialog, Dockable Dialogs, Navigation, and that gives me this little window up here where I can just either minus and make it smaller, or I can scroll the slider and make it bigger or smaller. 
Fine. Click it up bigger. The other, there's, there's many ways you can do this, but I like to see the whole drawing. Another way you can do that is, uh, is it image, view, uh, zoom. And you can click to zoom in or zoom out. But that's a lot of clicking, whereas on this little navigator window, you can just do it right away. I'm going to go ahead and hit File, Save, because you can never do that too many times. GIMP likes to crash. So the first thing I want, I, I've got it turned around. I've got it straight. That's great. Now I want to get rid of, you can see the background, and I, I made it in grayscale, so at least it's not yellow anymore, but see the difference between what a white background should look like and the background that we have? Well, let's try and get rid of that. And the way I'm going to do that in GIMP is colors, curves. I grab the top one, hold it down, left button down, start moving it and now you'll notice the background goes away that's awesome unfortunately the picture is going away too that's not so great why don't we go back like two squares for now I grab the bottom one and I go to the right and the picture starts getting darker I still don't have my lines where I want them so I'm gonna go up there and I'm move that a little now I get background but I'm seeing more of the lines it, it's this Weird kind of, you just got to kind of go back and forth till you just lose the background and then you kind of keep the line. You see it disappear? You can't see it real well on the screen, but are you folks seeing it happen on yours? All right, so, you know, that's going to get rid of your background. Ideally, you want a nice black and white drawing. All right, so, and what I did to this poor person's assignment is I got rid of the scale, which angers me. All right. So I think that's probably about as good as we're going to get. Uh, what do we got? Two and a half. So did I lose a lot of the line work? Yeah, not really. Let's go to like here. And then we went over to two and a half. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't want to make it too dark. And if I go too far, it just disappears. Let's, let's just stick right about there and then hit OK. File, save. Oops, wrong one. File, save. All right, this guideline I don't need anymore. You'll notice if I move my mouse over it, it, oh, excuse me. I'm going to use the Move tool. Click on that little four-way arrow. Take your finger off the button. Move that. Notice there's a no parking circle next to it. When I get over the line, see how it turns red? And a little cross comes up as opposed to no parking circle. When it's red, left click, hold it, drag it all the way up, and it goes away. I don't need it anymore. All right, now I've got this. I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put site plan on it and reference north. And I'm going to do that fairly quickly. To do that, I want to use the text tool. Text. For a font, um, let's click on the font. If you click on that font, you got your choices. Verdana's OK. I like, I don't know if it's got it in this one. Let's see. And then, oh, 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 nope. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll let you guys use any font you want. There is a way to get some better fonts in here. I haven't done it yet. Um, so I'm going to stick with Verdana for me. You might want to try. And I like Optima. I like Century Gothic. Those are true type fonts, but I can't give you a specific lesson on. I don't think you've got Century Gothic. Look for Century. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Century Gothic. Look at that. Let's see how it looks. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make my little square. My text is black. You can see that's black over there. And I'm going to go site plan. That looks a little big to me. I'll go ahead and highlight it. And I just keep clicking down. That's a little better. 
Um, if you want to try italics, there's a button there for italics. Bold. I mean, you can you can mess around with it. I just like in Century Gothic. I just like it the way it is. If I want to make all this menu go away, I just click on this other layer, and now all of a sudden I can see where it is. And then let's just go reference more. As you can see, that is massive. Um, rather than try and highlight everything, I can just go, I'm going Command A. You might want to go Control A. Let's see. And yeah, that's a little too small. I'd like to be able to at least see it. That looks all right. I'll go ahead and click on a different layer. Now, I want to move that reference north a little closer to where the reference north is. I use my navigation window to zoom in and move around. So I use my move tool, drag it over. When the finger, when the cross comes up, that means I'm over the letter. Left click, drag it there, and so far so good. Not a little. All right, next thing I want to do is I've got all this background here with these gray circle, this gray whatever you want to call it. I like to fill that in with white. You don't really have to. If you save this as a PDF, it will all come out white, but I find this really annoying to look at, and I'm going to want to do some crop work on a minute. But So what I'll do is I'm going to go over here. There should be a paint bucket tool. See the little paint bucket? Left click on that. You want it to do uh, foreground color, yes. I'm going to click on this color. See, I've got a black and a white up there. I want white. So I click the arrow and switch it to white. That's considered the foreground color. OK. I then take my paint bucket, hold it in one of these corners, and left click. And it just filled in that corner. And then it just fills in that corner, it just fills in that corner, it just fills in that corner. But I don't know if you can notice on the screen, I've got these lines where it filled it in. If I click again in the triangle, it fills in the lines. It just fills that in. Now it looks all white, and I feel better about it because I hate seeing those triangles. I would then, hmm, how do you do it again? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it right back to here. All right, let's even go to there. Right, I'm going to go ahead and move that again. Nope. All right, so up here, yours probably looks like that. You click on the paint bucket tool. It says bucket fill tool. You switch from black being on the top and white being on the bottom. Click that little switch arrow, and now white's on the top, black's on the bottom. You then drag it over the picture, and notice a little paint bucket comes in. Put your little cross in one of the triangles you want to fill, and left click. And it will just dump paint in there right up to the edge of that. Dump. Do all, is everybody having any, anybody having any luck with that? You're not, okay. Uh, does it say fill type? I still got a little, I gotta get rid of my triangles. There they go. File, save. And now the only thing left to do is I wanna crop it. And you normally would have had to do a scale and you would have had to put your name and the date or whatever, whatever I typically tell you to put on there. Um, crop, little crop tool. You make a rectangle, left click, drag a rectangle, and then you can grab one of those corners and get it wherever you want it, which I would put right about there and hit enter. File, save file, 
export, select file, and I want to put it on the desktop, select file type, portable document format, there it is. Da, da, da. Right, and I don't like that, but I guess that's what I called it. It is. Export. Let's see what it does. Alright. Uh, layers as pages. You want that turned off. Fine, fine, fine. Export. And with any luck, got a weird name to it. Let's see how the PDF looks. I'm going to go ahead and open with, let's do Chrome, let's see what comes up, there you go, and I mean, it, it's okay, but clearly I got rid of all the yellow background, the picture's straight, and I'm, again, you know, that's what I'd like you guys, when you're doing yours, to think about how to do that, and there is.